going. Um, because of the vagaries of redistricting this year, uh, we have a veteran congressman facing off against another veteran congressman. Uh, his opponent this year is Republican Tom Latham of Clive. Uh, it's very rare for veteran incumbents to have to square off against each other, and this is a race that's being closely watched across the country. Welcome, Congressman Boswell. Well, thank you, Carol. Can you, uh, is this about right? Can you hear me okay? All right. Well, good to be here, and I'm especially happy today because uh, joining me today is my wife, Dodie, sitting right here, and a daughter, Diana, and I'm very proud of their public service, and I mean that public service. Uh, Dodie taught school for 37 years, and her, our daughter, 30 plus, so we're very proud of their contribution, and we, we discuss around the kitchen table once in a while about uh, you know, who's doing what to help others, and I submit to them that they have impacted uh, probably more lives than anybody else in the family. And it's a very, very important thing. So I just want you to know they're here. And I got somebody else I introduced that uh, I saw in just a moment. But Carol, thank you for doing this, uh, the public service that you do at the register. To, I don't know, how long has the soapbox been going on? About the mid-90s. About the mid-90s. But it uh, started, and it's a popular thing. And sometimes folks walk by, they say, what in the what's, that, what's that all about? And then some of you stop and join in and appreciate it. I had a kind of a special thing mentioning uh, my family teachers. A uh, young man sitting back there, his name's Benny. Yeah, there he just waved at me. And just before I came up, why well, he gave me a little, uh, a little lecture, a little uh, exchange, if you will. Grandpa's laughing about it, but you know, I bring this up because he's thinking about our future, and that's what we're here about, and that's what's going on. So Benny, I was very pleased. Uh, you know, you may, we may not agree on every point you said, but you're thinking about it, and I appreciate that. And we don't, we don't find that a lot everywhere we go. And uh, I go to schools quite often. I go any chance I have, any opportunity. And occasionally I hear people say, boy, things are just going, well, I won't say where they're going, but, you know, things are not going too well because this, that, and the other. I don't agree with it. We got some of the best kids and engaged, and I have never gone to a school, wh whether it's lower grade up through high school, that I haven't appreciated that opportunity because we got good kids, and uh, they're smart, and uh, they're going to lead us into the future just like we've been doing for a long, long time. So it's still the greatest country that's ever come around. I feel that strongly, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about me here in just a moment why I feel so privileged to live my life in the United States of America uh, versus some of the places where it could have been, I suppose, uh, as I've had the chance, as we've had the chance, family a number of years, but I've had the opportunity to live nine years of my life outside the country. I like the United States of America, and it's always good to come home. I just met a Marine veteran over there a little while ago he came up, he noticed I was wearing a lapel pin. It shows that I'm a veteran, and uh, we exchanged a little bit. And uh, I want to thank anybody that's listening uh, that give their time to the military and our defense of this wonderful country, uh, my appreciation, and I know that you all feel the same way. So who's Leonard Boswell? Well, if you look south, about uh, the crow flies, about 75 miles, uh, that's where we're from down there in uh, southern Iowa. I look out here and I see uh, Margaret Wyan in the audience of a classmate. Uh, we started out going uh, separate country schools. And you know, uh, you probably know Margaret, but just up the street here a ways is a replica of the old country school. Pretty close to where we went. And what was the name of your school? Do you call, recall? Wyan. Wyan. <laughs> the Wyan family uh, had their own school apparently. I guess I forgot about that. Uh, I went to one down south of there called Stringtown. And uh, the reason they called it was between Davis City and Lamoni on Highway 69. And for some reason, th for that half a mile there, there were just a lot of homes were put up. There was not a town there, but they named themselves Stringtown because it was strung along uh, Highway 69. And so that became the name of the school. 
went there, uh, we let, they closed those down in the sixth grade and we went, uh, went into town and that's where I became a classmate of Margaret. So uh, Benny, uh, you're going into sixth grade, why I'm giving you a little history about when I left the sixth grade and went, uh, went from the country into the town to go to, ta go to town school and then on to high school and so on. So down there in Decatur County, and we have a wonderful university down there. We called it Graceland College in my time, but then it became a university, oh, shortly after I got drafted into the Army. And uh, so we was, uh, had the opportunity to go to school there and did that. So I just got, that's the 15 minute sign, is that what that is? It's, I, uh, it's not 15 minutes, not seconds, okay. So anyway, uh, raised, uh, I was born actually in a tenant farmhouse, just a little bit south of the piece of ground that we've got down there. And I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not proud of it. It's just a reality. And uh, I share that because I've gotten to, because of education and opportunities in this wonderful country, I'm one of those, we're one of some of those that have gotten to have a piece of the American dream. And I'm kind of concerned about that. As we go forward, I think it's I think it's attainable. I think it's there for us. I think we got to reach out for it, because I want it for Benny. I want him to have it, and I know you do too, and these other youngsters out here, as well as my own children, my own grandchildren. That's very very important. So anyway, uh, that's where we come from down there. And uh, after high school, went to Graceland, if you will. It's uh, there's another Graceland off back uh, toward Tennessee or somewhere, but that's not the one. We're talking about Graceland University uh, private college down at Lamoni. <coughs> and so we went there as a junior college. Got drafted after that and uh, here in Des Moines, came up here, the induction station used to be right downtown at the old KRNT theater. I don't know, Carol, if you remember that or not. Do you have, no, you, have you been here that long? No, but anyway, that was the induction center and I got drafted on my birthday and what, uh, uh, the, what's a draft mean? Well, some of you don't know about that, but that was when you got a letter from your friends and neighbors. And that's what it said. Greetings from your friends and neighbors. You have been selected to go straight to the Army. And uh, so that happened. And someday, if you want to hear a little story about that, I'd share it with you. I won't take time to do it today, but it was extremely important to me when my turn came that I should go and uh, because of an event that happened with a relative. And so uh, I wanted very much to go. We were married, hadn't been married too long at that time. <clears throat> I probably didn't have to go. I could have probably been deferred, uh, found some reason not to go. But I told Dodie when, uh, when we married, when that draft came, we were gonna go. And we did. And didn't expect to, but uh, I had the opportunity to spend a little over 20 years so I was a private, went off went right back through Lamoni on the bus, went down to Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, went through basic training, and, and the whole cycle started, and uh, ended up uh, going to officer's candidate school, and uh, we ended up going on from there to flight school, and then to fixed wing, and then to helicopter school, and then airborne training, and it just went on and on. And we had a family tour. We took our two little girls that then and went off to Germany for four years, I spent half of my time in the field preparing for the invasion that was gonna come from, uh, from Russia. We thought that uh, they would be coming and uh, our assignment at the 8th Infantry Division was to be in the Fulda Gap. Uh, they're not too far from Frankfurt where they said this mechanized uh, effort would come. So we spent four years there, lots of stories of that came back and then Vietnam after that and ended up spending two tours in Vietnam, assault helicopter pilot, uh, pilot at the time. And that's how I gave my service there and uh, managed to get through that. <coughs> and uh, a lot of my friends did not. And I go to that Vietnam wall, I, it's, uh, it's an experience for me. And it probably is everybody else in the category and so on, so I, uh, that's that part of it. Came back uh, to do what I had hoped to do. Uh, our final assignment was down Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Uh, I had gone through the class or the school there uh, between my tours to Vietnam and 
And then as time went on, I had my final assignment there as instructor at the uh, Commandial Staff College. So we were close to Lamoni, and uh, so we knew we were going to come back to farm, so I was up there every chance that we got and so on. And so uh, we started that process, and uh, when we came home and to farm, and uh, I'm leading in to talk about my concern about the farm bill. Uh, we ought to be in Congress right now doing something about that farm bill. We should not have come home. Uh, and had this work through. We should have been there taking care of that because it's extremely important to this state. This whole part of the country is port important to the country itself. And uh, pretty shortly after we got back to the Iowa to farm, I, we went through, some of you might remember, uh, an ag crisis in the late 70s, early 80s. And it was tough. It was very tough. A lot of people lost their investment, a lot of banks closed, it was, it was a rough time. And in the midst of that, I went through a drought. And we had a drought, and uh, I had uh, decided early on that if you're gonna go back and farm, the one thing you're sure you gotta have a good contact with is a bank. It's capital intensive. And uh, you gotta have a, a farmer's store where you buy and sell your goods. And I was a little bit too confident I didn't need insurance. And I found out that was a mistake. When we had that uh, drought in the 80s, the early 80s, uh, we did not have insurance. We left check rows. I got the uh, Farm Service Agency, we called ASCS at that time, to come down finally and give us a check. And we have from zero to nine bushels to the acre. Now that's, uh, that won't work in case you're wondering. And it was pretty tough. And we, we should have a farm bill. That's all there is to it. And you know, my opponent, Mr. Latham, talks about how he's so tight with uh, Mr. Boehner, the speaker. Uh, I would just wonder how much he told you that he pried upon him, tried upon him to get that farm bill done before we came home. We need it. We need it for many, many reasons. And uh, you know, that was passed in the Senate uh, in June. And we passed in the House oh, what, a little over a month ago. And we should have had that on the floor. We should have had a farm bill. And then we should have had the, the compromise, the conference between us and the Senate and got it done. You know, you know five years out, you're gonna have to do a farm bill. And so it didn't come as a surprise. Uh, and as here we are in one of the best parts of our economy here in Iowa, we've enjoyed for years, notwithstanding the drought this year, but you know, that's where a lot of, uh, we have a lot of export. And it's a plus to this uh, debt deficit I wanna address here in just a couple of minutes. But it's terribly important to us and we didn't do it and uh, shame on the, the process because it should have been done. And so, you know, there's, uh, there's something there that you may wanna think about as we go into go, go, we're going down the road here. Excuse me just a minute, I'm gonna have just a little sip of water. and the rest of your water is a bunch of right over there. So anyway, uh, here we are with a situation that people say, well, where are we going? What's going to happen to us? And uh, you know, we got this debt deficit thing. How are we going to deal with that? Well, we do have a lot of people have had amnesia how we got here, but we're there. We have to deal with it. And we have done it. We went through a lot of fluff about passing bills that we knew that Anybody that had any sense would say, that's not going anywhere. That's not gonna get the job done. It's not gonna go through the process and end up getting signed into law. Why don't we do something that would be doable? Why don't we do something that would make a difference? Why don't we do something that this country needs? And we've had that opportunity, but it hasn't happened. So we got this debt deficit and uh, you know, the president was just right over there a few days ago and. I, uh, we've got a presidential election going on and a lot of talk about who's right and who's wrong and so on and some people are having a hard time making up their mind. I'm, kinda ha I'm having a little difficulty knowing what Mr. Romney really stands for, but uh, he did make a decision here recently and he chose a, a vice president. Somebody I, I know, served with him, he's a colleague, 
and he's known for the Ryan budget. The Ryan budget would make a lot of things different to you who are out there in the listening audience. A lot of things different. You know, it would uh, if if you appreciate that we've got Medicare, well, they would go into a voucher system, and you know, it's going to cost you a whole lot more. Do you want that to happen to you? Uh, this donut hole you've heard about on the prescription drug thing would go back to where it'd start be going back out instead of shrinking down like it's been doing now in the last uh, three or four years, and uh, it, it's scored to actually go away and should go away. And uh, what about education of our children? What about Ben in his future? A lot of that benefit would go away. And so what do we do? Did, you know, is there some way we could get this budget squared away and take care of this debt deficit? Well, there are several things. But it was in 08, under the previous administration, that a guy named Paulson, the Secretary of the Treasury, came to the Congress and said, I've got to have $700 billion now or we're gonna go over a cliff that would be worse than the Great Depression. Uh, that wasn't just a surprise to him, I think, after we got to digging into it. And as Mr. King said here a couple days ago at the, with the bankers, you know, he knew about that, but here he showed up to tell us about it and no restrictions. Well, we went into quite a little discussion there for a few days and, uh, you know, you've gotta have some oversight. Uh, no, we don't wanna go over that cliff and so on. So we had to, a choice to vote for something that would keep us from going over or not to vote for it. The first vote, it failed. I remember coming back and I think the chief of staff picked me up and she said, well, what's gonna happen? I said, I think we'll be called back. So we, we gotta do something, we can't let this happen. And if we're going down, let's go down fighting, let's just don't go down and go over the cliff. And so uh, I voted for it, uh, my opponent did not. He didn't think it was a good idea. He'd, uh, he's talked about it constantly, but yet in his major investment, his banking operation, why, danged if he didn't use it. Now figure that one out. And if you wanna know a difference in between he and I, there, there'd be a difference, and it's, it's pretty big. Uh, he voted for the Ryan budget, I did not. Uh, you know, so there's some things to be thinking about there I've worked very hard to get a farm bill out because I'm on that ag committee the fr and uh, you know I, I don't see where the, the input took place. So there's major differences in, in the things that, that we stand for and if you want a contrast, uh, uh, this is the year you're gonna have a contrast and I think it's big. And you know what do you want for our future? What do you want for Ben? What do we want for my grandkids? And what we want to happen? And I think you better take a close look. I had a person come up to me not too long ago and say, you know, you're kind of a nice guy. I, well, thank you, I appreciate that. Well, Mr. Latham, kind of a nice guy. I said, well, appreciate that. But we, we're, we're kind of confused. What are you confused about? Look at the record. Look at the record and you'll find out there, just, you don't need to be confused. You know, his, uh, his record, uh, I had some of you folks talk to me just a minute ago that uh, you're from one of the new counties and uh, you said to me that, uh, you're looking forward to the representation that I might give you, well, that I will give you, and uh, they felt like that uh, Mr. King hasn't represented their needs at all, their farmers out there. And I said, well, if you get Latham, you get the same thing, because they vote alike. Go check it out. So that's what they need to do, and I guess uh, that's what they will do. And that's what you need to do, me too. Do you, do you know where I stand on affordable health care? Do you think I want us to go back and if you've got a pre-existing condition that you can't get insurance, do you think I want those of you who's got your children out there on your plan till they're 26 years old, I want that to go away? Or do you think I don't want the seniors to be able to get their, visit their doctor and get advice on how to have preventive care and so on? Do you think I want that to go away? Does anybody want it to go away? Do you think there wants to be the limit? How many times do we get calls into our office that I've had insurance for 30 years, and now I, I was in the hospital with cancer or something, and my insurance policy expired, and I couldn't have insurance no more because I got a pre-existing condition. Do you want to go back to that? I don't think so. And uh, so, you know, if you don't like those things, uh, tell me why you don't like them. And that's my question to my opponent. If you don't like them, you want to do away with it, 
tell me why you don't like those things. And I'd like to know. And so there we are. Now back to the farm bill. We know that we have to have a safety net. It is still extremely capital intensive. It costs a lot of money to put that crop in. And so we have to pass the farm bill. And we know that there's not uh, coverage out there for things like what's going on right now. But that new farm bill that the Senate brought to us and that we passed out of the House provides for that. We need a farm bill. And those uh, the, our children that uh, are out there that uh, get ready to go to school and so on, they need a farm bill because they got to eat. So, uh, you know, think these things out. Check us out. Look at his record. Look at my record. And you make your choice. And I think you'll discover that I'm representing 90 plus of you, and he's representing something, something like that top 2 or 3%. But you check it out. The record is there. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great fair. Thank you. Good morning, Register.